My name is Ryan Downey and I'm here to talk about our work with the Particle Swarm Optimization. Particle Swarm Optimization, or PSO for short, is an algorithm that was first used to model social behavior of birds and fish in nature. It has since developed into a widely researched algorithm to approximate solutions to many kinds of problems. The algorithm works by first assuming a swarm of n particles. These particles are analogous to individual birds or fish in the real world. These particles use information available to them to either explore new solutions to a problem or move closer to already known solutions. By doing this over an extended period of time, the particles will eventually find or get very close to the optimal solution to a problem. Every particle that makes up the swarm has access to some information. Firstly, they know the current value of their solution and their current position, which is a solution to the problem the algorithm is trying to solve. Each particle keeps track of the personal best solution value it personally has achieved and the position this was achieved. Each particle also has access to the global best solution value and the positions at which this was discovered. Lastly, a particle is aware of its current velocity, that is how fast its position is changing. The concept can be a little difficult to understand, so I will go over an example. Say that we have a swarm of n particles that can move around in a room and record the temperature at their current position. The goal of this swarm is to find the lowest temperature that exists within this room. The picture represents a scalar field of the temperature inside a room. The temperature range is shown by the scale on the bottom, with purple being the coldest and pink being the warmest. The dots represent the individual particles that make up the swarm. This picture shows the very beginning of the algorithm, where the particles are semi-randomly distributed throughout the search space, which is the room. Each particle also starts off with a random velocity. The algorithm occurs in iterations, which in this case will be a set amount of time. In this example, let that be three seconds. So every three seconds, every particle in the swarm will note its current position and measure the temperature there. If it is lower than any temperature it personally has seen before, it will remember. At this point, every particle gets to decide if it wants to explore more or to head toward either the personal best or the global best. Their velocity is adjusted accordingly. This occurs for some predetermined number of iterations. This slide shows the state of the particles after the predetermined number of iterations has completed. You can see that the particles have more or less grouped up at the local minimum temperature spots in the room, with the majority grouping up around the absolute lowest. The algorithm will return the lowest temperature any individual particle found and the coordinates of this lowest temperature. Note that while this algorithm often will return the ideal solution to the problem it attempts to solve, it is never guaranteed to do so. Here is a flow diagram for the general PSO algorithm, and it is fairly simple. First we initialize all of the particles in the swarm, and then we begin to iterate through the main loop. Every time around the main loop, each particle in the swarm performs a procedure in the dashed box. The main loop stops once the stopping condition is met and outputs the global best solution that was found. After initially getting a grip on the meat of the algorithm, our first task was to apply it to a well-known computer science problem called the traveling salesman. This problem states that given a list of cities and the distance from every city to every other city, find the lowest net distance starting from one city, traveling through every other city only once, and ending in the starting city again. This slide shows an example of the traveling salesman problem. Each dot on the left represents a city, and the connected dots on the right show the ideal solution to the problem. I won't go into too much detail about how this algorithm works, but it is important to note that each dot in this picture does not represent a particle. Each particle represents a potential solution to the problem, such as the image on the right. Why did we initially work on the traveling salesman problem? Well, it turns out that it is a good stepping stone toward working on shortest path problems. There is a lot more research done on applying PSO to this particular problem than to shortest path problems. 
There is also the simplification that the paths always contain the same number of nodes, which can be very troublesome to deal with. Lastly, it also served as a great test run because of the abundance of free useful data available for this testing. The main goal of this project was to optimize communication between UAVs in a swarm. A major aspect of this is efficient multi-hop communication. This problem can be approximated to a shortest path problem. So the next step was to apply PSO to finding the shortest path between any two UAVs in a swarm. In order to adopt this algorithm to work for calculating paths, a couple of fundamental changes to the algorithm became necessary. First, instead of a velocity function, a particle's behavior on a given iteration of the algorithm is a discrete choice. These choices are determined by probabilities that change as the algorithm iterations increase. The data representation of the paths also changed from the traveling salesman application to accommodate some of the complexities associated with path creation. Lastly, in order to avoid premature convergence at a local minimum, the global best path is replaced with a neighborhood best path. For the traveling salesman problem, it was fine to represent paths as an array of indexes corresponding to all the node numbers the path passes through, because the path never had to insert or remove nodes from the path, only to rearrange the order. To avoid complications of creating loops, a priority-based encoding was adopted. It makes sure that each node can only ever be included in a path once. How it works is that every node has a priority value let's say between 0 and 1,000, as in this example. The numbers along the top of the top array are the numbers representing the nodes themselves. The actual numbers in the array are the priorities of these nodes. The numbers along the bottom of the top array correspond to the order of the nodes in decreasing magnitude. Since we know what the end node of the path that we are looking for is, we count down in order of priority to construct the path until we reach the end node. In this example, we know the end node is 2. So this specific sequence of priorities encodes the path 4, 7, 3, 2. It will often be more convenient to show the velocity changing operations of the later slides in the path index notation shown at the bottom of this example but know that the underlying code will be performing these operations on this priority encoded data. Instead of there being a global best, we decided to use a neighborhood best and to organize the particles in a ring to realize this. Instead of comparing the current path to the global swarm best, the specific particle will only compare against the personal bests of the neighbors on either side of it in the ring. In this example, Particle 1 will only compare itself to Particle 6 and Particle 2. When I refer to G-Best later in the presentation, know that I am actually referring to this neighborhood best. The explore function works by pseudo-randomly adjusting the priority values that make up the path to change the path. If we take the example of priority values between 0 and 1000, then we can add or subtract up to 58 from every priority value except that starting node. 58 was chosen because it is one-fifth of a standard deviation for a uniform distribution of numbers from 0 to 1,000. The pbest swap function works by finding nodes that are common between the personal best path previously found and the current path. We then find out proportionally where the matching number is in the personal best path and try to replicate that in our current path by swapping it in the direction of this calculated target index. In this example, we found 7 to be a match. It is four-fifths of the way into that path. If we multiply that by the length of our current path, which is 8, we get a value that rounds to 6. This 6 is our target index that we would like to move our 7 toward. We then swap node 7 in that direction, thus moving 9 ahead of node 7 in the path. The gbest segment replacement function works by finding common nodes between the current path and gbest. Choosing this node essentially splits the current path in half, the part before this node and the part after. The algorithm chooses the smaller half and replaces it with the corresponding partial path 
from GBEST. GBEST replace node works by finding a node in GBEST that isn't represented in the current path. It calculates proportionally where in the global best path this node exists and places it into the current path at the same proportional position, replacing whatever node was there previously. GBEST delete node looks for nodes that exist in the current path that do not exist in the global best path. This node is then removed to create a path that is one shorter. Tests were performed on two major data sets. The first was a 100 node network that was generated with MATLAB with random path losses between 20 and 120 decibels. The second data set was a 625 node network generated using an electromagnetic propagation simulation software known as Wireless Insight. Each data set was tested using PSO with 20 particles for 100 iterations. The algorithm was configured to output the top three paths for each node to every other node in the network. The performance of the PSO algorithm was compared against an exhaustive search algorithm that was run on the same datasets. For the 100 node test, the results were fairly similar. As you can see, the shapes of the path loss magnitude distributions were very similar to each other. The mean path losses of the two algorithms were only two decibels different from each other. The best paths matched 52.6% of the time when it did not match, it was still pretty close. These graphs show the path lengths of the best found paths from both algorithms. It shows that PSO was more likely to find better three node length solutions and miss some of the four length ones. For the 625 node dataset, the distributions are again very similar and the mean magnitude of the paths is around two decibels different. In this instance, the PSO algorithm matches the best path found by the exhaustive algorithm 72.6% of the time, though a large part of this is probably due to a lot of the best paths being the direct path from start node to end node. Looking at the path lengths data, we again see that PSO often missed the longer ideal paths. So given these results, why would we want to use PSO for this application? First, in a real network, we cannot presume to know the path losses for the entire network, which would render the exhaustive algorithm useless. While PSO is initially slower, it has the advantage of being able to start where it left off in future iterations of the algorithm to help it adapt. Previous answers act as great seed values for the particles and can help them converge much faster on a better solution. PSO by its very nature is an adaptive algorithm. If a network is highly dynamic, then PSO is better equipped to handle these changes, 